we have a day word. And in the day word, I was very excited as I read it. 1 Corinthians, no, Romans. Romans 12, verse 12. If you can write that down, maybe. Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope. Be joyful in hope. When you have hope, my brother, my sister, there's an excitement that can run in you. An excitement that can run in you. And I want to say, there's no way that you can lose hope, like we said before even, because Christ is your hope. Christ is the essence of your hope. Amen. Now I want to start, first of all, a little bit out of context, but I just felt to share that about when the guys were in the storm, they could lose hope that they're going to drown in the midst of the storm with their boat. And as they were focusing on the storm, they saw what, and it, he looked like a ghost. When you go through the storm, and you forget about the hope, even when he comes to you, originally, in the beginning, it could, he could like, look like a ghost. But if you can focus on him, that will be excellent. Amen. Amen. Now we have the teaching that many would say, it's all about getting out of the boat, out of the comfort zone, and onto the water. But you know, there is no mandate that God has given you to walk on water. There was a mandate that they will get into the boat and go through the storm to the other side. That was the mandate. Hello? So let us not lose focus in our everyday struggles or everyday situations that we're thinking of in today how to get out of the boat, but meanwhile, we're supposed to focus on the mandate and that what God has for us, and that is to reach the other side, to walk in obedience. And there's no climbing out of any boat if you cannot see Jesus. Peter said, Lord, call me to come to you. It's about going to Jesus in the storm. It wasn't about getting out of the boat so that I can also walk on water. Are you with me? In the midst of your storm, don't get out of any boat. Don't get out of any boat. Don't climb out of the mandate. Don't climb out of the provision that is there for you to get to the other side. The boat is there as the provision for them to get to the other side so that they will be faithful, they will be obedient to God. Amen? So when you're facing the storms, when you're facing situations, please, He is your living hope. And if you cannot see the hope in the storm, you don't move. You stay in that boat. Because you are wise. You're not stupid. Hello? It will be very stupid to get out of the boat. Say, I'm walking by faith now on the water. But who called you out of the boat? If Peter said to Jesus, yes, he said, he asked him, if it's you, Lord, call me to come to you. And if Jesus in the storm said, no, Peter, stay in the boat. Peter would have stayed in the boat. Hello? But the only way he could get out of the boat is because it's Jesus, in the storm, called him to him. And that was the focus. And then, when he took his eyes off Jesus, yeah, then he started to sink. Praise God for Jesus. Hallelujah. God will provide for you in everything that you need. But please, stay with the mandate that God has given you. God knew the storm is going to come. And like we said in the past, Jesus was on his way, not to the boat. Jesus didn't want to go to the boat. Jesus was on his way to the other side. John 12 says, somebody loves me, he will serve me. And where I am, my servant will be also. Jesus is going to the other side and he will meet them on the other side. God is wanting to meet you into your destiny. He's already there in tomorrow. Jesus is dead. 
Hello? But praise God, even if we sometimes would fail in our faith, God in His grace will be there. He's on his way to the other side. He gave them authority to speak to the storm. When he got into the boat, he said, you little of faith. Hello? You little of faith. Why? They were scared, but they had to speak to the storm. You need to speak to your storm in the name of Jesus Christ. Because in the name of Jesus Christ, you've been given the authority. When you understand the fullness of the name of Jesus Christ, where every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And all devils, billions, no, I don't know how many devils there are, have to bow before the name of Jesus. The fullness of authority to change heaven and earth is in your mouth. But we cannot use it if it's not according to his will. Are you with me? But if it's according to his will, you're supposed to walk in it. You need to speak to your storm and tell the storm to calm so that you can say, no storm will take me away from faithfulness unto the Lord. No storm will stand between me and God to be obedient to him. He said we will go to the other side. That is what he said. Therefore, we will go to the other side and storm, who are you? To stand in our way. That's like David saying, Goliath, who are you? That is like Joshua and Caleb saying, oh, these giants, they are food. We're going to grow through them. But God said, God said, God said, God promised Canaan will be ours. Now the same in the storm. My brother, my sister, God could organize the storm so that you can grow in your faith. Are you with me? So that you will say, God, will, where he guides, he will provide. Amen? So when you're in that storm, please don't go for a trick to just get out of the boat and walk on the water. That would be stupid. But if Jesus is in the storm. So when they failed in, in speaking to the storm, they just started to be captured by fear. He went to them. He went to them, and he will, he will get in your boat, and from that place he will speak to the storm. But get with him back into the boat. Get into the mandate that God has given you, and from that place, standing with him in the mandate that God has given you. Stand with Christ in that what he has called you to do right now. If it's to study, if it's to, to work, if it's to testify, if it's to be a light uh, to the children. If it's to whatever God has called you to do, get back into that and from that place, place with Christ, speak to your storms, speak to the challenges, and you will see the greatness of God. God wants to show his greatness in this storm. Allow God to show his greatness in this storm. And don't let us not throw tantrums in the storm and get so stressed up about storm, the storm of financial provision or this or that, whatever you are going through, that we don't allow God to show him self to us and others around us. But if you can have the faith to say, God, please come and show yourself. You are, you are our eternal hope in the storm. Amen. Now the scripture says, verse 12, be joyful in hope. Then we see Philippians 4 verse 4. Hey? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Not rejoice if you see what God has done. Not rejoice because wow. Look what the Lord has done. Yes that also. But first of all rejoice because he is. Just because God is there. That's why you rejoice. You cannot lose hope. If you think you lost hope, it's in your emotions, it's in your soul. But hope is alive and is living in your spirit. That's God himself. You've lost hope if God has, lost, has turned his back on you and you're on your way to hell. Then yes, you've lost hope. There's no hope for you. Just except to burn in hell. But if Christ is in your life, then hope is alive in you. You cannot lose hope. It's impossible. 
The enemy can manipulate your thoughts and in your soul. A lot of turmoil can happen. And in your feelings, you could feel that you don't have hope. But hope is unshakable. From that place of hope to step out in faith and do certain things. Yeah, and with, you failed with the faith. You failed in this maybe. Or hey, the faith, you didn't grow in faith. Or faith became less. And with, the faith can go up and down. But the hope is unshakable. Because he's the person, Jesus Christ. Everything will fall. But he is constant. He is constant in everything. Amen. Are you with me? So when you say, I'm going to focus on hope, on the fact that I have hope, it's to respect Christ more than the storm. It's to decide, how will I then get hope? Or how will I see I have hope? By deciding that I respect him who he is. And he said, he is my hope. And only because I choose to respect him, that's why I say, I have hope. Amen. Next time, students, it's to write down. Hey? Thank you. Okay. God's going to help us, and we will move from that place. So if it's rejoice in the Lord, it says, rejoice in hope, because he is your hope. Now, I'm just going to focus on one thing, Psalm 23. If God is called our hope, Psalm 23, and God is my shepherd, then hope is my shepherd because God is hope. If I have hope, let hope be your shepherd. Or let stress be your shepherd. Because, because of the presence of stress, I'm going and I'm doing based on stress. Fear is your shepherd. You shall lack. But if God is your shepherd, you shall not lack. You shall not be in want. Amen? If hope is your shepherd, that means I'm following hope. Are you with me? He makes me lay down in green pastures. Hope brings rest. He makes you to lay down in this green pastures. Not first of all, the circumstances of green pastures. He makes me lay down in wonderful circumstances. That everything is like very nice green grass. No, this is the first one that I must eat. The word... We must eat the word. Uh, hello? We must eat the word. And if you're talking about green grass, it's to lay down in the word of God's provision. The word is the greatest provision that God has given you, apart from his presence. God in your life, biggest, greatest gift given to you, the word of God. Go and lay down in his word, in his Awesome provision in this green grass, Mr. Sheep. Okay, you with me? Hope makes you lay down in green pastures. Hope will lead you beside still, quiet waters. Hope, the fact I know that I know that he's with me. And that in that hope, there will be always the freshness of his guidance. Still waters. Waters is the part of the image of Holy Spirit. Hello? So in that I say, he will always lead you into freshness. Always lead you into the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Word. Hope. I have hope. And because you have an unshakable hope and you respect Jesus Christ as the hope, therefore, Holy Spirit, will bring freshness to you. Therefore, you will eat the word and you'll find rest in his word. The green pastures. Amen. He leads me beside the waters. He refreshes my soul. Who hope. When there's discouragement, depression, negativity, any, any freshness in your soul? No. Small, solely smothered. 
soul is suffocating. Soul is down, down, down. Soul is intimidated. You feel trampled on. And let somebody just tune you or tell you what to do. Then a hundred times more, you feel you've been trampled on. Because already you are trying to get some breath in your soul. That anxiety, God wants to deal with that in Jesus' name. Amen. Freshness. He refreshes your soul. How? That in my day I know my hope today in my circumstance, my hope in my duty, my hope in the fact that I'm supposed to get this right and I don't get it right. But I have a hope because Christ in me, Christ in me, he will be there. He will help me. Therefore, by faith, I step out and I do this. Oh, it didn't work. But I still have hope, unshakable. And I will go by faith in this. Because I believe this is what God is saying. And you grow in your faith. You practice your faith. Amen? You practice your faith. But you will rise, you will rise, you will rise every time because there's an unshakable hope alive living in you. That's why you can get up. Amen. He guides me along the right paths, in the path of righteousness. Hope will always guide you. Yes, there's a thousand names that we can give to Jesus Christ that's all about truth. But in the season, prophetically, God said we must focus on hope. So that's why we focus on it in this way. Hope will guide you in the paths of righteousness so that you will stand in the right place. You know when you're involved with rubbish, when you find yourself, suddenly you find yourself in the wrong place. You're involved, you're starting to get to criticize people. Tomorrow, one month later, you'll find yourself as a total different person with such a lot of criticism, such a lot of pessimism, negativity. Just all over you and you can just it's just impossible not to see a lot of mistakes. It's just there. Why? Because that thing will lead you into the path, into a, into a way, into a place, where later, if you're honest, you will be shocked. But if you allow Holy Spirit to establish that hope that you will see it as revelation, then so much can happen for you so much. Amen. It's all for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, for hope is with me. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for hope is with me. Hope is with me. And in that place, when even in the nations, in the season, people can go through a valley of death, through a, through a place of fear. And in the valley of death, it has, it has to do with the survival mode. That people get into the survival mode, just to survive. Not to thrive, but to survive. And in that place, just to survive, even though you feel, I must just try to survive. Even in that place, don't fear. Hope is with you. Hope is with you. You will go through. Amen. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You will have comfort because of the hope in you. Hope prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In the presence of your enemies, you have hope. And from that place of hope that you can sit and have a feast and cheer and rejoice in the one where the battle belongs to him. The battle belongs to him. The battle belongs to him. And because I have hope, I can rejoice. I can have a feast because I know the battle belongs to him. I'm going to focus on him. I'm going to have a feast not after he won the battle for me. No. Just because he is there. Just because hope is there. Just because God is there, I'm going to have a feast in the midst of my enemies. 
Not because you see everything change and you got the victory and this thing in all these facets, you have all these breakthroughs. No, even before they break through, you're at the feast table because of his presence. Hope. Hope has given you that. Amen. Ah, let us be that in the nations. The nations cannot have it. The nations cannot have that feast. The man without Christ can only have the feast after the breakthrough. You have the feast in and during the battle in the midst of your enemies because you are totally different. Your life is hidden in Christ and hope is living in you. Amen. Now, same man. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life because I walk with hope and I follow hope. That's why goodness and mercy will follow me. Amen. Because I honor him. You honor him. Not honor the breakthrough, first of all. Not honor first if you have success or not success. That's what you focus on the most. That's what you honor. You focus on your anxiety. You focus on your image. That's what you honor. You don't honor God then. What you focus on the most, and that is not, I must sing psalms the whole day. But in my situation, what is God saying? What is God saying? And the more you ask that later, you don't have to say the whole time, what is God saying? What is God saying? What is God saying? What is God saying? It's becoming a pattern in your mind that you just have as a lifestyle, you have this expectation that God is going to guide you. And there's just this room where his voice is speaking. You don't even have to say, God, what are you saying? It's just there. Is it not true with bitterness? You evaluate the situation and you make a choice not to forgive. You evaluate the situation based on the fear and the anxiety or by fear and the disappointment. You make a decision to be better. You look at the facts and it confirms again a situation why I will be bitter. The devil sends somebody to you that also see the same mistake and also is in offense. And you agree with that person where two or more agree. And after the fifth, the sixth, the seventh time, it's just there. There is a voice of bitterness. It's just there. He's speaking without you asking him to speak. Now, my brother, my sister, a hundred times more, get into the place. God, what are you saying? God, what are you saying? God, what are you saying? God, but no, it's not super spiritual. Put it in there. God, what are you saying? In there. And you make the decision to hear. You make the decision to hear. You make the decision to hear. You make the decision to shh and let God speak. Shh and let God speak. Shh and let God speak. And later, like the voice of bitterness that just has, it has made its home with you. And he speaks whenever he wants to speak. Without you asking him even. And so the Holy Spirit in you, his voice will just become clearer and clearer and later you don't have to say the whole time, what are you saying? He will speak in you. He will speak in you. Hope will be alive. You will hear the voice of hope. You will hear the voice of hope. When you come into that place of hopelessness or negativity or whatever, you entertain the negativity. That's the only thing you can hear. Because you will not honor the voice of hope. But it starts with a decision before you walk out here. And things can change. You can walk out here and say, I really have hope. Not because your emotions said so. But because the word of God said so. So, who will speak to you? Your emotions or the word of God? And confirmation is not because your emotions changed. No, it's because in the foundation of who you are, you, 
chose to respect the word of God. And therefore, you know, I have hope. I have hope. Amen. Are we with one another? It will follow me in the last one. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of hope. Where hope is alive, there I will dwell. I will not make my home in a place where there is no hope, where Christ is not. My home is not in that place. I will not lay down in that place of bitterness or, or negativity. I will not lay down there because I, that's not my home. Jesus paid with his life. He gave everything for the home that I can have with Father God. Why will I be so disrespectful and decide I will lay down in negativity and depression? Hello? I will not lay down. I could experience that in my soul. Yes, I could experience the, 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 the battle in my soul with my emotions about negativity and anxiety and stress and, and depression or whatever. But that's not the place that I will lay down. That's not my home. I'm at home with Father God and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's my decision. Finish. I am not at home with this stress. I'm not at home. With this negativity, I am not at home. I will not make a home here. And that thing will not make a home in me. Because I know where's my home. I will live. I will dwell. I will be in the presence of hope. Where hope is, there I will be. And that will I will call my home to be with him. Not only after he changed all my circumstances. Not only after he gave me the full breakthrough. Canaan is not my home. Where God is, that's home. If God is with me in Egypt, that's my home. If God is with me through the Red Sea and I'm in busy walking through there, and any moment something could happen with psh, everything, no, I'm at home. If I'm in the middle of the Red Sea, I'm at home in the desert. If God is there, I'm there. That's what Moses said, hey? God, if you're not coming with to Canaan, then we're not going. May that be our hearts in everything, in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Let it be so, my brother, my sister. In Jesus' name. I want to quickly just talk about the vision statements. When we started the church, remember to get your calendar as you go. And in the vision statements, we said, no, first of all, God must be at home. Amen? Jesus will build his church. And if we are going to build church, we must do it with him. And he said he will build it on a certain revelation. So we asked Peter, who, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And what's that all about? You are the Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Who's the anointing? The Holy Spirit. You are the Christ. You are the one with the Holy Spirit over your life. But you are also the son of the Father, who is God. You are the son of God with God as your father. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. What is the main revelation there, my brother and my sister? The main revelation is God as Trinity. It's I acknowledge Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you can understand the, the revelation of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed are you because Father revealed it to you. And on that foundation in your life, Christ will build his church. And then you can build with him. But you have nothing to build with him if the revelation is not alive in you. You are busy with who? You will look at your prayer life and some would ask, pray to Jesus the whole time and, and ask Jesus to do this and ask Jesus to do that. And many times because they have a major wound about the Father. Now he's not sorting it out in his heart about Father because Father figure, there was disappointment and hurt and all these things that happened in the Father figure. But how can I build for the Father a home? 
if there's the whole time I issue and I'm just speaking to Jesus and with a disrespect, actually ignoring the Father, where Jesus said, ask me nothing, but ask the Father in my name. So if, if I understand that and I get that understanding and according to that revelation, you ask the Father in the name of Jesus. There's only one, two, or three, or four, there's no time for this now, that you ask Jesus. And that's one, the one thing is, Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire. Where John said, he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Amen? Are you with me? Let's not go into all of that now. But, if you can't understand, I recognize the Holy Spirit on your life. I understand that you are in Jesus Christ. And I understand who's your father. Who's the father of the nations? If you come to that place, it starts where? You and your father. You in Christ. Hello? Holy Spirit in you. And then, God can work with you. You can work with God. And what you build will be from him. Based on that revelation, based on that hope, so it will be. Nejandre? So it will be. Nice notes. Great. In Jesus' name, God's going to help us with that. Let hope be alive in you. And because with hope, you and God, you and Jesus, you're excited about the home that you're building for your Father. As Holy Spirit will help you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now we say, Jesus revealed himself. I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd is always there for you. That he's showing perfect father. He's always there for you. Secondly, he said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the true vine. I'm the door of the sheep. I'm the light of the world. And with all of that, if I understand who he is, I will know what he will do in my life. Like we said now, if he is the shepherd, we just saw in Psalm 23, what will happen then? If I know who he is, then I can come to understand what he is, what he is doing. If I can know who he is, then I can come to an understanding of what he is doing. And my first understanding is that God has only the best for me. In your circumstances, because you know your God, you don't understand the circumstances, but you understand your God in certain facets. And the first thing that you understand is, He has a hopeful future for me, because He's my hope. He's there for me. He will never leave me, never forsake me as the Good Shepherd. And that is what you understand of Him in your circumstance. Come to understand Him. Amen. Disciple with the Good Shepherd. Disciple has to do with put a certain pattern of life over you. Disciple has to do with discipline. No, nobody must tell me what to do. I'm free. Yeah, you are free to go and mess up your life. But you also have the honor and the privilege to come into the freedom of Christ to obey Him. You have the privilege to have the freedom and the capacity to obey God. And if he's giving you discipline, you understand him, then therefore you know it's because my father loves me that there's discipline on my life. Amen. It makes it so much easier because eternal life is knowing him. Hey, John 17, 3. Eternal life is knowing God. Walk into eternal life today. Live eternity tomorrow. Live that what has eternal value today. In how you focus now and how what you receive has eternal value, or is just I'm hearing and in, and it doesn't really touch me. And I learn the lifestyle, how I can hear the word and allow it not to touch me. Allow it not to do something in my life. And I'm training, you're training yourself right now what to do with the word. And that is to accept and let it change you or to hear it like religion and just let it go by. May we push so that the word will always touch us. 
by us allowing it to touch us. Amen. Disciple, build with the bread of life. Build with hope. You can build with hope. If you have no hope, what on earth are you building? When you build with hope, you will be prepared to lay foundations accurately. But if you are just stressed and full of fear, and things must be done. Things must happen now. If things must happen now and things need to be done, you're not going to have the wisdom with patience to take really time with the foundations. But if you have hope, you will understand patience. If you have hope, you will spend time on foundations even though it doesn't look at all like the building that you saw in, in your heart. Built with hope. Amen. Train with the way, the truth, and the life. The way. The way. His strategy. His breakthrough. Train with a focus on Him. Otherwise, you will train yourself, like we said, how to be bitter. Train yourself how to walk with compromise. By starting in this way that you compromise. Starting in that way. By entertaining other thoughts. By focusing on other things while you hear the word. Oh, I've heard this sermon now for the second time. I don't have to focus. Maybe after you've heard John 3.16 the second time, remember not to focus because you've heard it the first time. Is that okay? No, it's not okay. If the word of God will touch me, even if I hear it the second time, I can maybe focus even more. For that, what I didn't get the breakthrough the first time, to say, God, I took that and thank you. And you changed this. Yes, and I understand that now. Oh, I, I, I can't remember that part. But yes, I take that for this. And you go through it the second time so that you can know, know the word and that it will touch you. Anybody, when you did your maths or you studied biology or some of those stuff, you read it once through it. If you, and you won't go through it the second time because it's too boring. Yeah, it will not have an impact. It cannot have an impact. That's ridiculous. You will do it over and over and over again so that until you can see that I can remember it. But with God's word, no, no, only once. Second time, do you hear something that was said before? How? No, I've heard it already. I don't have to focus on the word of God. I don't have to focus on what was shared. Second time, it can have so much more impact. Bless the man. It doesn't walk in the walk of the, in the way of sinner. It doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, but the counsel of the counselor, Holy Spirit. That does not stay, stand in the way of sinners but in the way called Jesus Christ the way. That doesn't sit in the seat of mockers, but sit with Christ in heavenly places. Blessed are, very happy, that guy. Why? Because he will meditate on his word day and night. Meditate means repetition. Meditate has to do with, look at it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And the guy that's not so stupid to think it's once and then it's finished. But the guy that has the savvy, is that the good word? That has the brains to understand. I need to look at it again and again and again. And if I do that, the scripture says, everything that that man does will prosper. Everything he does will prosper. Three Living water, leaves will not weather, fruit in season, successful man. That is success. But there's no shortcut with meditate on his word. There is no shortcut. It's especially when you feel the word does nothing to you. Then, if you experience no breakthrough with the word, especially then you need to meditate until you experience the breakthrough. When do you really need to, need to get into the Word? When you don't feel like it. When you feel the Word does nothing to you. Then you really, really need to get into the Word. Okay, can we take that? That is train with the way, the hope. Activate with hope. Activate with the resurrection and life. Activate 
You are excited because he's there, not because he gave you the breakthrough. You have excitement because, hello, he gave you the breakthrough. No, you're excited because he's there. He's there. Activated by hope. Activated by his presence. By the resurrection and the life. Romans 8, that says, Now if the Spirit of God, who raised Christ from the dead, is living in you, let's say the Spirit of God, living in me, raised Christ from the dead. So the Spirit that is living in you, raised Christ from the dead. If He is living in you, surely, 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 He will activate you by renewing your strength, by your mortal bodies, bring it to be fresh, in a place of freshness. Are you with me? Are you with me? Allow God to do that. Activate. And let your life activate others through hope. Activate with hope. Because you not just talk them into something. That's what the world can do. And sometimes very, 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 very successfully. But you bring activation into somebody by helping him to focus on the hope that is in him. To focus on the hope that is in him. That's unshakable. That's unshakable. So in Jesus' name. Plant with a true vine. God will plant you a specific place where you must be where? Where he is. If he wants to be in a certain place, he will look for someone that's mature enough. Say, I want to take you and put you in this place, put you in this business, put you in this company, put you in this place where you must work for government, put you in that place because I want to do something. I, the Lord, wants to do something. You are planted, planted there to bear fruit. You can fight the place where you are planted, were planted. Or you can say, God, how must I bear fruit effectively in this situation? Why can I do that? It's hopeless because look at the situation. Look at my mistakes. Look at all the... Uh -uh, I can do that because God is with me. God believes in me. God is with me. God believes in me. Therefore, I can do it. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Reach with the door of the sheep. Reach with hope. You cannot reach with religion. You can reach people and give them all the religion. And out of fear for burning in hell, they can start to follow Christ. Yeah. And with all these rules and all these stuff, reach them with hope. But you know, you cannot make the decision for people. The word says, we will be the fragrance of Christ, the aroma of Christ. Also, the angelam here van Christus wees. But for those who will not accept it, you will be the stench. Anybody smelled a dead rat before? Now you will be like a dead, rotten rat for some people when you bring the word of God. You will be like a dead, rotten rat to some of your flesh that does not want to accept. So you can read the word and you can be, but what you experience is like a dead, rotten rat. Because you don't want to change. You can sit here and what I say could be to you like a dead rotten rat. Because you don't really want to change that. You are, want to do now other stuff. You are busy with that. You're busy. So even irritated. But if I'm open because I have an excellent hopeful future. And I'm open. I will experience the fragrance of Christ. The one next to you can experience, yeah, wow, yes, something is opening up, something is opening up. And the one next to you, oh, leave the hell Can we finish? Are you with me? It's the same word, it's the same word. But from your side, as long as you are faithful, to make sure that you reach with hope. That there's hope for the nations. There's hope for the churches. There's hope for many people 
even in Christ, people serving the Lord, that they lost their job, and the other guys using the name of Jesus as a swear word, they got a raise, and this and this and this, and this guy standing in faith with Christ, he lost everything. What now there? What there? What, 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 what? You reach that man with hope. Because hope is a person. That other man has no hope. Because within one day it can be taken away. <laughs> hope cannot be taken from you. Because Christ will never leave you. Hope can never be taken from you. But within one minute hope can be taken away from that guy that has all the billions. And how he can lose it. As was made, Makar, you still here? The last one, enjoy with the light of the world. Enjoy in his light. Don't entertain your own thoughts and don't entertain all these other chachis that other people don't know about. And maybe you will trust one person with it. More and more your life needs to come into that place where you will be able to trust more and more and more and more and more people because you are secure in Christ. The more you are secure in Christ, the more you will be able to trust people even though they're going to disappoint you. Because you're know, going to know that I'm standing in grace and grace is alive in me and I understand grace over my life. How can I then not have grace on them? But the more hurt you are and more, not in just immaturity, I want to uh, say that you are smothering yourself, putting yourself back in here, the less people you can trust. But put your life in the light. Put your life in the light more and more and more and more by finding yourself in Christ so that you don't fear the rejection. You don't fear people are going to hurt you. You don't fear it's going to happen because they're not going to be perfect like you think, the way you think oh, you are. No, no, no. I know you don't think that. But Hello? You're going to disappoint yourself. But still enjoy the process with hope. You can enjoy life, and that brings us back to my day word, Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in the hope. Rejoice in the hope. Let there always be a joy in you because you have an unshakable, eternal hope living in you. Thank you, God, that you just come and you work that through your spirit in us, that there will be an unshakable hope from that place that we will rejoice and have a joy and a fulfillment in that what you want to do. Even now, with communion, Lord, I pray, God, that you will really guide us and that we will understand how to rejoice in what you have done for us. That we will rejoice in what you have done for us, Lord. Thank you for that honor. Thank you for that privilege. God, I pray for every man in negativity, in depression or anxiety or going through stress and situations. Ah, Lord, I pray that you will help them to be faithful to the mandate, to stay in the boat until they see you in the storm. And not to get out and try to solve situations in the storm. Thank you, Father. Through your wisdom, you show us how to be and how to live. I pray that every man and woman that really reaches out to you, that you will touch them in a very, very special way. In a very, very special way. I thank you, God, that you're going to come and do that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So we pray. Amen. Amen.